Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a Ledger Nano X using your phone and the Bluetooth connection. So let's get started. So today I'm going to walk you through the initial setup of the Ledger Nano X hardware device using only your phone and the Ledger Live app, iOS or Android. I'll walk you through the unboxing, the initial setup, writing down the recovery phrase, getting the account set up in Ledger Live, and then I'll show you how to move some Bitcoin in and out of the wallet. Now there are several advantages to using the Ledger Nano X paired with your phone. First and foremost, of course, is that you're mobile. You can go anywhere and send and receive crypto from your Ledger Live app. And a lot of people may not even have a computer, so this is the optimal configuration for them. However, there are a few drawbacks to using the Ledger Nano X paired with a phone. Some people prefer to do this in the privacy of their own home, and they also prefer the desktop experience. It's a little uh, bigger and easier to see than trying to do everything on your phone. But the main disadvantage to using the Ledger Nano X device with your phone is that you are unable to do firmware updates using the Ledger Live phone-based app. In order to do a firmware update, you're going to need to connect it to your computer and run the desktop version of Ledger Live. Now, you really aren't forced to use one or the other configuration. You can do both. There's a lot of flexibility. You can use the desktop version when you're at home and you can use the mobile version when you're on the go. If you want to use the mobile version at all, you are going to need to get it paired to your device. So I'm going to walk you through the setup of uh, unboxing and getting set up using only your phone and getting the device paired up to your phone. I'll do a separate video on how you set up the Ledger Nano X using a desktop based configuration. All right, so let's jump in. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox this. All right, so this is the Ledger Nano X here. You're gonna get a cable, comes with some recovery sheets. Recovery sheet is very important. When you initialize this device, it's going to generate a random master private key, and then it's going to give you the backup phrase for that. So we're gonna we need to write this down. This phrase can be used to restore the device. All right, so I'm gonna go through the setup of the device so we can get this recovery phrase written down. So the first thing we'll wanna do is get the uh, Ledger Live downloaded. Uh, you can do this on iOS or Android. I'm using an iPhone, so I'll do the iOS version of it. Head over to the Apple Store and search for Ledger Live. All right, we'll go ahead and get that downloaded. All right, and once you've got that downloaded, we'll go ahead and allow Bluetooth because that's where the connection goes, right? All right, so uh, we'll get started. We'll uh, agree to these terms of use. All right, and in today's case, I'm using a Ledger Nano X. So we're gonna choose Ledger Nano X here. Uh, we've got a brand new Ledger Nano X, so I'm gonna choose set up a new Nano. All right, they've got a few uh, overviews here of what we're doing. All right, so uh, let's hit, uh, let's do this. Set aside a little bit of time, so you've got uh, uh, you need to focus on this task, right? So make sure you've got enough time to get this done. Make sure you have a pen and make sure you're alone. You don't want anyone to see your recovery phrase when you write it down. So we'll hit OK, I'm ready. Uh, one more warning, right? So we're going to turn on the device uh, and then we're going to choose set up new device, right? All right, and uh, they want us to come back when it says pin code, right? All right, so as I mentioned, I have the device on. Uh, it's ready to go, and it's been charged up. I don't have the cable connected, but you can uh, connect your cable and let it charge while you're doing this if you want to. Uh, but since we're using the Bluetooth, we're not even going to need the cable. Uh, so let's go ahead and navigate, right? These buttons here navigate from one side to another. There's a little arrow indicating that you can advance to the next screen. So we'll go ahead and do that and then uh, tells us to start Ledger Live, which we've already done, all right, on our phone. We're ready to go on that. So we'll just go over here and choose set up as new device, right? So we'll hit both buttons here to activate this command. So we'll hit both buttons, and then it says choose pin code, right? So let's go back over to the instructions. 
right? They want us to go ahead and uh, go to the next step. So I'm just going to tap my phone here. And they explain what the pin code is and why it's important. And we'll go ahead and set up the pin code. We'll choose the pin code and then we'll confirm the pin code. All right, and then on the device, in order to activate this command, we'll hit uh, both buttons, right? And then you'll just choose your pin code. And you use the buttons up or down to choose a number that you want. When you get to a number that you want, you just hit both buttons. And that advances you over to the next digit. And then you can go up or down and choose the code that you want. Now, once you've chosen that fourth digit, you have that check mark there indicating that you can end right now just by hitting both buttons. But you can also continue and choose a longer pin code. I would recommend choosing all eight digits. But if you uh, feel like you've got one long enough for you, just go ahead and hit both buttons. And now it's going to ask you to confirm that. Okay, and when you've uh, re-entered the same pin code and you see that check mark, you'll hit both buttons again. And then it tells you to write down your recovery phrase. Now we can flip back over to the phone. See what the phone is having us do here. We'll hit next step. All right, it just gives you uh, some instructions on what the recovery phrase is. It's very important that you write this down and store it in a safe place. You can use this phrase to recover your device. So if the device gets damaged, lost, Whatever happens, you can always buy a new device and use this phrase to restore it. And once you've restored the device with the uh, master private key, it can be used to recreate all of the wallets that you've uh, created. I know you're doing this uh, while the wallet's empty, so it's kind of weird. You know, you're backing up an empty wallet, but you're basically backing up the master private key of this device and that master private key is going to be used to generate all of your wallets. If something happens to your device, you can restore this master private key and then add Bitcoin, add Litecoin, add Ethereum, and the same wallets will get regenerated and the same balances will be there. So this is a very important step. Don't show this to anybody and make sure you put it in a place that you will be able to find it. All right, this is very serious. Okay. So uh, I'll just hit that, hit that. Okay, uh, it's giving me uh, some uh, instructions on what to do. So we'll go through that on our device. Go ahead and hit both buttons here. All right, and it explains that there's 24 words. It has just generated a random master private key. So it's going to show us a list of 24 words, right? You're gonna wanna write all of these words down in order, notice they're numbered on the device, right? And you've got a sheet here that's also numbered. So just carefully write down all 24 of these words and then uh, we'll move to the next step. All right, and once you have them all written down, you can uh, advance to the next screen there and it'll let you know that you can backtrack if you want. If you wanna go back through and just uh, double check to make sure you've written them all down says press both buttons to continue, so we'll go ahead and do that. And there it says confirm your recovery phrase. You know, notice over here on the phone it says confirm recovery phrase. You can just tap that. And so you're going to need to scroll through each word uh, until you find the correct one. So they're going to show you word number one. Uh, you're going to have to scroll through and find it. They're not in any particular order, so it's a little bit tedious but I'm sure you guys can handle it. It's not a big deal. All right, so we're gonna hit both buttons. All right, and then, uh, so there we go. Uh, confirm word number one. The device says company. My uh, card says honey. So I just need to scroll through until I find the word honey. There it is. And then uh, once I find the correct word, I hit both buttons and it takes me over to the next word. Like I'll use the buttons here to scroll over back and forth until I find the word burst. That's our second word. There it is. All right, we'll hit both buttons. All right, and that takes us to the third word. So from here on out, we just uh, scroll back and forth till we find the right word and then hit both buttons. All right, and if you get a little confused, you, can, you forget what word you're on, uh, the word is numbered on the device and it's numbered on your card. 
So uh, just make sure they match, right? We're on word number five, and so we need to find uh, the word holiday, which I have written down on my card. All right, notice when you get, uh, when you accidentally put in the wrong word, uh, it knows, right? It's got a checksum internal. So uh, just hit the button, both buttons, and then go back to the word that you were on and choose the correct one. All right, and then when you get to that last word, you'll see processing on the device. And then you should see that the device is ready now. Take a look at uh, our, uh, phone, see what's going on. We'll hit next step. All right. And then they give us some instructions on hiding the recovery phrase. All right. And then they have a little quiz that they want us to take here. I'll help you with this one. Uh, the ledger, the crypto is stored on the nano. That is false. It is stored on the blockchain. All of your cryptocurrency is stored on the blockchain. That's the way cryptocurrency works. What is stored on the device are the private keys for each of your wallets. So the private keys are that code that give you access to your crypto out on the blockchain. So you can move it around. So we'll choose on the blockchain. We'll go to the next question there. Uh, if my recovery phrase is no longer secret or safe, then uh, you need to move that crypto before someone else does. So if you have misplaced or lost your recovery phrase and you are certain that you have and you still have access to your device, right? You still remember the pin and you can still use the device. You definitely need to move that crypto off of there and put it somewhere else because you don't you you may end up losing the device at some point in the future as well. So move the crypto somewhere else, maybe to an exchange or whatever, and then reset the device generate a brand new 24 word recovery phrase, and then uh, you can move your crypto back in there, right? So my crypto is no longer safe, right? Well, next question. Uh, when I connect my Nano to the Ledger app, my private key is, and the answer here is still offline. Uh, this device stores the private keys offline. It never sends the private keys across uh, Bluetooth or across the cable when you have it connected to the internet. That's not the way this device works. The private key stays internal. It's used for cryptographic operations, right? The only thing that goes into this device is a request, right? And then the private key will sign a request and then sends the confirmation back to the wallet, right? So the private key always stays internal. So let's say Still offline. We're good there. All right, and there we go. All right, and then our next step will be to pair our Nano. All right, so let's go back over here. So it wants us to advance over one. All right, and then it says access the dashboard. We hit that. Both buttons. And this is the dashboard, right? We have an empty device that has uh, been set up. Make sure you store this in a safe place. Put that away, and now we're ready to uh, get rolling on this thing. All right, so let's go back over here. All right, so let's take it to the next step here. Let's go ahead and pair our device. Okay, we're gonna add a new Ledger Nano X, and then it detects the device through Bluetooth, and then we'll go ahead and tap this on the phone. All right, and then it sees the device it wants to pair. We'll tap pair on the phone, and then we need to confirm on the device by clicking both buttons. All right, we'll hit both buttons. All right, now it's gonna check the authenticity of our device. We need to hit allow ledger manager for this one. We'll hit both buttons. All right, and then the pairing is successful. The device is genuine. We'll hit continue here, and then we're ready. We can hit open Ledger Live, and we're gonna install some apps on our device. We'll start with uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. We can install more if we want. Uh, now, it wants to know which device. There's only one, so we'll tap that. All right, and there we go. We've been taken to the Ledger Live Manager section. Notice down there at the bottom, the manager is highlighted. So uh, let's go ahead and install Bitcoin. That'll be our first one. We'll just tap the install button there. 
All right, you can see it's processing on the device. All right, now after you install Bitcoin, it's going to ask you if you want to go add accounts. Uh, you can go straight to that and add your first Bitcoin account, or you can continue to install apps. We'll go ahead and focus on Bitcoin today. I've got a lot of videos on how you add other cryptocurrencies using Ledger Live, very similar to the desktop and the phone. Let's go ahead and add our first Bitcoin account. We'll hit Add Accounts here. All right, now we want to choose Bitcoin because that's the only app we have on our device. We'll choose the device. You may have multiple, but in our case, we only have one. So we just tap on the device. All right, and now we need to open Bitcoin app on the device. You'll see that the device is ready. I just hit both buttons. All right, now it's going to scan the device for any existing Bitcoin wallets. In our case, since we've just set the device up, it should be empty. All right, since it doesn't discover any existing wallets, it's just going to offer us the option of uh, creating an empty Bitcoin wallet. We'll go ahead and let it synchronize. All right, and we'll hit continue here. And we've successfully added our first Bitcoin wallet. And there it is. You can see you've got an empty Bitcoin wallet on here. All right, now we can also go back to manager if we want to. Notice there's a blue dot down there. That generally means that there are updates that are available. So uh, let's tap into our Nano again. Now notice there at the top it says uh, the firmware 1.3.0 is available. I'll go ahead and show you the uh, firmware update. We'll just tap more info. Oh, okay, so in order to update the firmware, you are going to have to connect it to a computer. So uh, if you've got a computer and you can connect it and install Ledger Live and run the firmware updates. If all you have is a phone, then you're just going to have to uh, get by with uh, whatever version of the firmware your device comes with. All right, so let's go ahead and install Ethereum, just for the heck of it. And as you can see, it's really easy to install multiple, multiple apps on this device. You can uh, do more than one at a time. All right, and you can dismiss this little uh, alert here. If you just want to go to accounts, you can just tap accounts there. There you see you've got the Bitcoin account that we created. Uh, you can also uh, tap in here and edit the name over here at the top where that little wrench is. If you want to change the name of your account, just take that one off. You can do that here, right? And then if you want to add a new account, you can just hit the plus up there in the top right corner, uh, choose Add Accounts, and then uh, I'll add an empty Ethereum account. Choose your device. You need to open the Ethereum app on your device by hitting both buttons. It's going to scan the device for any existing wallets. If it doesn't find any existing wallets, it will offer you the option of a brand new empty wallet. All right, so you can see there that it's offering me the option of creating an empty Ethereum account. All right, I'll just hit continue here. And then we can go to accounts. And then you can see there that I've got a Bitcoin and an Ethereum account. And like I said, I can tap into the Ethereum account, tap that wrench in the top right corner, go to account name, and just edit the name so it doesn't have that one at the end of it. You can call these accounts anything you want uh, to help you remember uh, what they're for if you have multiple accounts or anything like that. All right, so I'll go ahead and uh, show you how to put some Bitcoin in your uh, wallet and then send it back, right? So like I said, the uh, Ledger device is a keychain. It holds private keys. Uh, Ledger Live uh, functions as the wallet. It gives you the ability to send and receive and see your uh, transaction history. All right, it's the public side of the wallet, but it does interact with the device. The device is the security. The device allows access. So let's see how that works. So I'm just going to go over to my Coinbase account. All right, and I'll just purchase a little bit of Bitcoin here. So I'll hit that blue button down on the bottom. I'm going to choose buy. 
I'll choose Bitcoin and I'll choose $50 worth of Bitcoin. I'll hit preview buy and I will get a merchant charge here, but I'm just trying to give you a demonstration of how we move the crypto. All right, there we go. I've got the Bitcoin in my Coinbase account now. So I want to put this in my uh, wallet, all right? I want to put it in my Ledger Live wallet. So we'll hit continue here. All right, and there we go. Now I'm not going to trade, I'm going to send, right? Up in the top right corner, there's that little paper airplane icon. I'm going to tap that, all right? And I'll go ahead and send it all. Now that I've got it, I, I need to hit continue. I'm not going to use contacts. It wants to know where I want to send this Bitcoin, right? There's a to field up there. I can put a mobile email or a cryptocurrency address, a Bitcoin wallet address. That's what I'm going to do. So I'll just slip back over to Ledger Live. All right? I'll tap on my Bitcoin wallet. I'll choose Receive here. It's going to be in the Ledger Nano. All right, it wants me to open the Bitcoin app again to generate a Bitcoin address. Actually, you can generate a receiving address without the device if you want to, but it's more secure to have the device confirm, right? All right, and there we go. We'll hit continue here. It shows the Bitcoin address on the device. It shows it on the phone. I'm gonna copy this address into my clipboard and then I'll confirm on the device by uh, scrolling over one and then choosing approve by hitting both buttons. All right, it's ready to go. I've copied the address into my clipboard, so now I can go back over to Coinbase and I'll just tap and paste in that address. All right, and then I'll hit preview send. So you can see that's the address of my Ledger Live wallet that's in the to field, and I'll hit send now. I need my two-factor for uh, Coinbase. So I'll go over to Coinbase, I'll tap that code, I'll slide back over to Coinbase, and I'll paste in that code, I'll hit submit. And there it goes, I've sent my Bitcoin to my Ledger wallet. I'll hit done here, and you can see there's a pending outgoing Bitcoin transaction. All right, we can go over to Ledger Live, go back here, we can kind of uh, do a uh, pull it down to scroll and wait for that Bitcoin to arrive. Now, I'd just like to point out that while we're waiting for the Bitcoin to come in, we do not need to leave the device on, right? The device has already done its job. It has confirmed the address. And now we can even turn the device off if we want to. We can exit the Bitcoin app, right? We can just uh, turn our device off if we want. Go over here to power down just power the device off. It's not necessary to have the device on in order to receive Bitcoin. The Bitcoin simply moves around on the blockchain. So you can just power off your device, put it in a drawer, and just wait for the Bitcoin to come in. It might take a while. Uh, could be a few minutes. It could be an hour or so. You never know for sure. Uh, but you've uh, done everything correctly. Just wait for the Bitcoin to arrive. You'll be able to see it on your phone in your Ledger Live, uh, and it doesn't need to interface at all with the device uh, in order to receive Bitcoin. All right, so you can see here that the Bitcoin has arrived in uh, the wallet. The Ledger device was off, right? It didn't matter. Uh, Ledger Live monitors the blockchain for your public address and will uh, show you all of your incoming transactions and your current balance, right? Even without the device attached. But uh, so that's how you set the device up and send some Bitcoin into the wallet. Now, uh, I'm also going to show you how to send Bitcoin back out of the wallet because that's a little tricky and you, uh, you, need, you will need your device for that, right? Because an outgoing transaction requires the private key. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we'll get the device uh, back up and running. All right. And then I'm going to... Go back over to Coinbase, and I'm gonna to go to my Bitcoin portfolio, right there where it says BTC wallet and zero. I'll go ahead and tap that. 
All right, and then the only thing I see there up in the corner is that QR code. Since it's an empty wallet, there's no outgoing icon. So I'll tap that little QR code. All right, and that's for receiving Bitcoin. Now, uh, now they, they've given us an address of our Coinbase wallet, right? This is the address that we need if we want to send Bitcoin to Coinbase, right? And uh, you might wonder, why do you want to do that? Well, if you're storing Bitcoin in your own wallet and then you decide for whatever reason that you'd like to trade or liquidate or whatever it is you want to do with your Bitcoin, you'll need to move it back to an exchange. So we're going to do that. We've copied the address into our clipboard, over to Ledger Live, to our Bitcoin wallet, and we're going to choose Send. And then I'll paste in the address that I got from Coinbase. All right, and there it is. So it's a valid Bitcoin address. We're all ready to go. We'll hit Continue here. All right, and how much do I want to use? Uh, I've got that little toggle down there. I'll say uh, Send Max. Notice uh, we're getting eaten up by fees a little bit, but that's all right. Uh, I just want to demo how this works for you guys. I'm not too concerned about these fees. All right. We'll hit continue. All right. And there's an overview of what we're doing. We can uh, choose to send the transaction uh, faster or slower. And uh, the fee will go up or down based on this. But I'm going to choose the default medium. These are Bitcoin network fees. All right. These are not fees that Ledger is charging you. It costs fees Bitcoin fees to send Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network. That's how it works, right? It's a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized network. And when we use that network, we contribute to the network in order to keep the network running. All the Bitcoin miners are processing transactions for us. So uh, we agree to use the network by uh, paying small fees when we send Bitcoin. All right, now let's hit continue. And it wants us to know the, the app really has no idea which, which device the Bitcoin is associated with until we choose, right? So we'll choose our uh, ledger device. Now, immediately it uh, tries to wake up, right? Because it senses the incoming transaction. So let's go ahead and enter our PIN. All right. And then it wants us to open the Bitcoin app. So I'll hit both buttons. All right, now we're ready. Uh, the, it sort of timed out on the phone, so I'll hit retry. It's going to communicate with the ledger through the Bluetooth. All right, it's uh, seen the device. Now it's loading the transaction. All right, so like I said, the Ledger Live app can receive transactions. It can show you your current balance. It can show you your uh, transaction history, but it cannot send Bitcoin out of the wallet unless it is authorized by the device. That's the security of the device. The device has the private keys on there. So what we're going to do is authorize the transaction. Now, as I mentioned before, the private keys that are stored on this device do not go across the Bluetooth interface. The private keys remain on the device. What has happened is that the application on the phone has sent a request to the device. The device is going to evaluate that and as the human operator, I'm going to authorize it. All right, so I'm going to review the output. There's the amount. There's the address I'm sending to over on Coinbase. Now I choose to click Accept. When I click Accept, the private key on the device will sign the transaction. Then it will send out the signed transaction back to the application to authorize the outgoing Bitcoin transfer. Right? So let's hit both buttons. I also have to confirm the uh, fees that I'm paying on the Bitcoin network. That's a separate transaction. I'll hit both buttons. All right. Now that authorized transaction is head back to the phone, and the phone went ahead uh, and sent out the Bitcoin, right? It uh, completed the transaction. All right. You can see that there's a pending Bitcoin transaction. All right. And then also, while that's going on, I don't need the device anymore. I can go ahead and uh, exit the Bitcoin app, All right, and then hold both buttons down for a few seconds, get into the command center, and scroll over to power off and hit both buttons, and then uh, just put the device away 
in a drawer. Okay, and there we go. I've received the Bitcoin back in my Coinbase account. So I showed you how to set up your Ledger Nano X, get your phone set up with the Ledger Live app, how to pair the two of them, uh, set up a couple of cryptocurrency accounts. We moved some Bitcoin into our wallet and then we transferred some Bitcoin back out of our wallet and I showed you all the things that you need to do to accomplish that. So if you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.